Welcome back to uh, Primitive Organic Garden today. I was harvesting some cabbage to make some coleslaw to go with some salmon patties and it occurred to me that I have three different varieties of cabbage all growing side by side in the exact same raised beds in both the front yard and the backyard and I would be derelict in my duties if I didn't do some type of video reviewing the variety trial type uh, for this spring. Um, my first tip about growing cabbage in the deep south, if you live in the south, the southeast, you live in a very hot, humid place, Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, uh, South Carolina, first tip about growing cabbage is don't. Um, collard greens are a much better suited plant to the deep south than cabbages and it's the same plant species got all the same nutrients but collards do a lot better in the heat and humidity than cabbage does um, so in this raised bed here we have three different varieties of cabbage planted we also got some mustard greens and some potatoes and some flowers and garlic but uh, these were all planted at the same time you can see this is one of the Savoy cabbages. It's about the size of a basketball. That one's doing really good. It's about a basketball sized cabbage. Um, I think I maybe had four Savoy cabbages out of this bed. Just harvested this one today. This one's the biggest one in the bed for sure. Um, even though these are doing great, they're nothing compared to the collard that was put in at the same time. So seeds started at the same day in the same tray, same potting mix transplants put in the same day you look at the collard and then you look at the little cabbage and so there's a reason that you know the collard is the king and the collard does much better about fending off you know fungal infections and bacterial diseases and flooding and humidity and high temperatures and the collard is a much hardier plant so don't plant cabbage unless you just happen to have extra space or you're not particularly concerned about your food security because you already got it covered um, anyway so I got three varieties of cabbage growing this year this is what they call Savoy perfection uh, the leaves are really dark which probably indicates pretty high mineral or nutrient content the heads are a little bit lighter than the leaves uh, they're pretty dense um, Earlier I had a couple of them this year that tended to be a little bit light and airy, but uh, this one's incredibly dense. The one I harvested today was as well. Uh, the Savoy cabbages are my favorite. They're beautiful to look at. Um, they're not quite as dense and heavy as a red cabbage, like the red acre I grew this year, uh, but the Savoys are really cool. Um, it's just a beautiful plant. I'm probably going to grow mostly Savoys in the future. Uh, the other varieties I grew this year were uh, Red Acre and uh, Brunswick or New Brunswick White. Uh, the New Brunswick Whites um, grew extremely slowly. Uh, the heads did not start off very dense and they seemed very prone to kind of like weird bacterial or fungal issues. I would not recommend this for the South. See there's some weird disease there. Um, this is probably a cabbage for up north. I mean it says Brunswick or New Brunswick which is Canada. So I shouldn't have planted this here, but this was like a free seed packet I got from Baker Creek. Um, you know, you make an order and they give you free seeds because they're really cool. But um, anyway, it's got some like weird little fungal diseases already starting. Um, if you want to grow gigantic cabbages, you know, cabbages that are the size of like, I don't know, massive, massive, you know, 15, 20, 30 pound cabbages, you need to be in a place like Alaska or Russia or Canada. In the deep south, you shouldn't even be growing cabbage. If you are going to grow cabbage, you need to grow really short season varieties. Um, I grew all heirlooms this year because I just happened to have the seeds. Like I said, the Savoy Perfection, the free seeds from Baker Creek, and I had some Red Acre that was also free. Um, I probably shouldn't have grown them. Like I said, I should have just done collards. But uh, they did all right this year. We had an exceptionally cold winter, which was really cool. Um, here's another one of the little Dutch white or New Brunswick's. Um, took some of the outer leaves off that one the other day because it looks like it was rotten a little bit. Uh, we'll look at one or two of the red acres. The red acres, they grow really slowly because they're purple and they don't seem to get very big. 
And so this one got dominated by this collard and this mustard green next to it. But you can still see there's a little red acre cabbage plant here. And a lot of the outer leaves are not particularly uh, well suited to eating. But if you strip off all the outer leaves, there's about a softball sized, really dense core. Um, but again, not super impressed with the red cabbage. Uh, it was the earliest to produce out of the three varieties. So variety trial 2020, 2019, 2020 winter. All these were planted in the fall. Like they were all planted as transplants in like November. And the Savoy, the Red Acre, and the uh, Brunswick all went in as transplants. And I want to say the Red Acre were the first to produce this year. And the Brunswick have obviously been the last to produce. Today was the first day I even harvested one of those. Um, I've harvested quite a few Savoys this year and quite a few purple Red Acres. And the Red Acres were the earliest, but they're also the smallest cabbage. So next year, if I do plant any Red Acres, they're going to be really closely spaced together. Um, there's no need to give those a lot of space like you would a Savoy or a Brunswick because the Red Acres don't get very big. But um, you could also probably grow them in buckets. I got Savoys in buckets that are doing fine. So this is a Savoy in a five gallon bucket. And I mean, that's a nice head there. That's, that's tight. It's only about the size of like a pomelo, a little bit bigger than a grapefruit. It's not huge, but it's really tight. All the leaves are beautiful. And because it's kind of off the ground in this bucket, it's not getting hit by a lot of pests like rodents and stuff. So that's pretty cool throwing them in buckets but uh here's another Brunswick here you can see there's some weird bacterial or like fungal issues on some of the outer portion of the leaves but uh the head seems to finally be forming up this one's about the size of again about a pomelo um pretty dense here um not quite ready I'm looking for that rock hard you know type of feel to it but that's pretty close um, that's not really happy. It's kind of growing in a low-lying swampy area with clover all around it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a couple more cabbages we could go and talk about through the garden. But, uh, we could also look at the gigantic collards that are way more productive than cabbages. And if you're in the deep south, you should be growing collards and not cabbage. But, um, anyway, just want to finish my coleslaw. And, uh... Like I said, I felt like I would be derelict in my duties if I had three different types of cabbage growing side by side and I was harvesting a little bit of all three of them today to make coleslaw and I didn't bother to even do a little short variety trial video. I mean, they're all in the same environment, the same soil, they're growing in the same trays and the same pot and mix in the same greenhouse on the same porch and they're all you know very consistent in terms of their cultural practices so to not uh, talk about the differences in terms of days to harvest and yield and vigor the Savoys haven't gotten any diseases like I said these new Brunswick's or Brunswick's they got all kinds of weird little diseases on them and they take forever to produce and these are clearly suited to some northern climate uh, the Red Acres I haven't seen a whole lot of disease on the Red Acres but there was one red acre that I harvested back in like early March and we had had like a 90 degree day spark spike in Mar March one day and the red acre had some like little weird bacterial infection on the outer leaves and I pulled them all off and thought the inside was clean and made sauerkraut with it and the sauerkraut ended up spoiling. So the red acres have gotten a small amount of disease this year although they don't seem nearly as disease prone as the Brunswick's but the Savoys, this is a Savoy perfection. I've had probably eight or ten Savoy Perfections this year. Not a single leaf has any evidence of disease on it, which is much better than the Brunswick's or the Red Acres. So that's my uh, tip for Southern Cabbage Variety Trial 2019-2020. Don't ever grow cabbage in the spring if you live in the south. Only grow it in the fall and the winter. Never, ever, ever plant a cabbage seedling like in March or April. Always plant them in, you know, September, October, November, grow them through the winter, harvest them in early spring. Um, if you're going to grow them, I would recommend, like, some nice F1 hybrids. I wouldn't grow these old heirlooms that I'm growing. But if you do grow heirlooms, I would look into a Savoy instead of something like a Northern Brunswick or one of the Red Acres. The Savoys are clearly the workhorses.
workhorses, and they uh, they do okay for sauerkraut, they do okay for coleslaw, and they do okay for fried cabbage. So thank y'all for tuning in. Eat your cabbage.